Hi, John Valvano here, and in this video, I want to overview the starter code for the C++ version of Lab 10. Now, this code actually runs, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, but let's go through uh, the functions. Okay, there's the main. Uh, that's the highest level, and we'll do that one in a moment. Uh, this is going to be your Lab um, a 6 solution. That's the DAC. Uh, the PLL, uh, you don't have to change, uh, but that'll set the um, bus clock to 80 megahertz. Uh, there is a random number generator. It's not very good, but uh, you're welcome to use it. Um, you can see that this particular function is going to return a number between 0 and 255. Now, uh, you don't have to embed your Lab 7 solution because we're going to use a uh, this version of the driver, which has both the low-level busy weight and the high-level out deck uh, in it. Okay. Now, um, slidepot.cpp is your Lab 8 solution, which you do have to paste in here uh, so that you have the um, object uh, for the slidepot that you did in Lab 8. Now, there are other videos about sound and the timers, uh, so I'm going to put them off from this video. Uh, we skipped Lab 9, or the UART was part of Lab 9, the UART and the FIFO, and so unless you decide to use two um, uh, launch pads to solve one game, uh, you won't need the UART or the FIFO code. Okay, so let's go back to main and uh, review what it is that's in here, okay? Uh, now, again, the assumption is you've watched the previous video that overviews the process, and so um, in here we're going to just look at um, the C++ version uh, of this. So that's, again, that's my Lab 8. Uh, this is the goofiness I have to use in order to call an assembly function uh, uh, from the C++. Okay, so again, uh, main.cpp is a C++, and these are assembly language programs, and that is actually a C function for the cystic handler. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, like I said, this particular function will run, and so we've got our numerated type. And so our sprite can either be dead or alive. And so the enumerated type is here. Uh, the type def will create a new type called status, uh, which can either be live or dead. Uh, FYI, this is going to be mapped to zero. That's going to be mapped to one, uh, but it will, uh, it will check the format. Okay, now uh, one of the educational object objectives of Lab 10 is encapsulation. Uh, and so uh, we could use a struct to encapsulate the information for the sprite, uh, like its distance, its position, uh, what it looks like on the screen, and whether or not it's live or dead. Okay, and so uh, that's a struct. Uh, again, uh, 319H students are not going to use a struct here, they're going to use a class. Uh, which I'll show you in the next video. But I want to run this program just for you to get a sense of how things fit together. And there's a type def uh, called sprite type. And this is one sprite, I named him Bill, okay, which will um, uh, uh, begin in the uh, X position of 60, which is sort of in the middle of the field, uh, a Y position of 9, which is near the top, It'll look like a small enemy. Uh, that's one of the space invaders. And it will begin alive. All right. Um, in order to do this multi-threaded uh, operation, we're going to have a background thread uh, which will um, move, the th move the sprites. Uh, and this is a very simple one. So if Bill is alive, uh, Bill's Y position will get larger. Uh, that happens to be down. And when, uh, when Bill hits the floor, uh, his Y position will be bigger than 155, and then Bill will die. Okay. Uh, again, we'll use a semaphore to synchronize the background thread. This one here, which gets run at um, 30 hertz, uh, and uh, the foreground thread we'll get to in a moment. Uh, this has got actually three threads. Okay. Here's a third thread, uh, which is going to run every second. Now, I don't know what you want to do with it, but this thread is actually going to get run um, once a second, and you can see it just maintains the time. All right. Uh, so, again, this particular starter code will run, 
uh, will be running at 80 megahertz. There's no Texas here. Um, and that's the initial, that's the random number generator, which gets seeded. Uh, that will turn on the liquid crystal display. And like I said, I have two background threads, uh, one running uh, at the, one running at the uh, game engine, which you can choose however you want, whether you want to do it 30 hertz or 40 hertz or 50 hertz. I don't care. It's your game. Uh, and this particular thread here gets uh, deployed, executed, invoked once a second. All right. So the key idea in, uh, in initialization is to disable interrupts, uh, make everything happen, and then turn it on. Okay. Uh, these are static images. Um, and this will put player ship in the middle on the bottom, uh, put the bunker down. Uh, we'll have some other ships that are sort of sitting around not doing anything. Uh, and they're just drawn statically on the screen just so it looks pretty. And then this main loop here will, um, will redraw Bill. Uh, Bill is the sprite that's going to move. That's his new position. That's his um, image. And that's how big he is. And again, this will run while Bill is alive. Okay. And there's the semaphore. Again, the semaphore has got two things. Uh, the background thread will set the semaphore, triggering a new event. The foreground thread, this one right here, is going to wait for the flag to be set. And when the flag is set, it'll clear it and draw the image. Okay, so after Bill has died, he'll say in the game over. All right, it's enough talking. Let's play it. All right, so uh, build. Again, this should run either on your board or in the simulator without any software changes. Okay, so um, I encourage you to do that uh, prior to doing any typing. Uh, it's just so you know when it starts crashing, it's your fault and not mine. Okay, uh, it's going to draw into this window right here. Okay, so ready, set, go. Okay. Now, I find it much easier to debug on the real board because it's anywhere from 50 to 100 times faster. All right. Um, as we saw from the image, this thing is moving at, you know, 50 pixels per second um, in real life. Uh, but in simulation life, it's going a lot slower. Okay. So there's Bill uh, coming down uh, to meet his maker. All right. So in summary, uh, the... Uh, starter project for lab 10 uh, for 319H has got classes in it. You've got your class from um, lab 8. You're going to add another class that we'll talk about in the next video uh, here in lab 10. And then you have at least two background threads. They can be periodic threads, like one can do sound, or this, or in this case, uh, the second one can do your game engine. Okay, so when Bill hits the bottom, uh, it will trigger uh, Bill's life as dead, and then the uh, system will say uh, uh, game over. All right, so enjoy this lab.